Hi folks, I'm Ian Baker and today we're going to go over the 2020 Sonic Light 169 VRK. This is a rear kitchen couples model, comes in right around 3,600 pounds and it's that light with a slide out. Let's actually start right back here toward the entrance. Uh, so as soon as you come in, you'll see this right here. You get a little bit of storage on one side and the other side you have a coat hook. Just enough to hang up, you know, two kind of thin jackets in there, or maybe like a sweatshirt, something like that. Right up top, you'll see the cubby hole with USB ports. So that way you can uh, have kind of a convenient place to plug in some of your cell phones, electronics, without cluttering up the countertop. And then you have your light switches as well as your slide control and your power awning control right there. As I turn around, you have the fridge freezer. And I really like this because as soon as you come in, you can just open this up, grab a beverage, head right back out, which is great. And up above it is your convection microwave oven. So you kind of get a two for one. Um, let, me, let me know what you guys think about a convection oven. I like the idea that it's a space savings because you have the microwave and the oven. And personally, I don't use an oven a ton when I camp. But let me know what you guys think. Would you rather have a standard oven and then just have a microwave or not have a microwave at all, just have an oven? Let me know in the comments section. Moving forward a little bit or moving to the side, I guess, is your rear kitchen. So. Uh, I think they did a pretty good job here as well. You know, they went with a round bowl sink again. Let me know what you guys think. I, I, I've heard both ways. Um, you know, the thing that is nice about it is that it's a deep sink, so you do have some room for your pots and pans. I know a lot of people, you know, kind of like a double bowl, and you could probably have the space to fit it in here, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, that you do get the nice upgraded countertops, which allow you to undermount the bowl, as you can see. You have kind of like a high-rise faucet there as well, so you have plenty of clearance. And then when you drop that down on there, you know, it blends in nice and uh, it, it creates some prep space because without a cover, you have basically no prep space in the kitchen, so I'm glad they did that. Two burner cooktop over to the side rather than a three, and again, for me, this is fine. I know a lot of people like a three. Let me know what you guys think. You know, would you rather have like three here and an oven underneath and take out this storage? I don't know. It's pretty good storage space there, especially when you're in conjunction with this one. You know, you actually have spots for your pots and pans, which I like. Underneath that is your furnace. Direct vent furnace is all you need. Two full extension ball bearing drawers. You know, you can have a spot for all your flatware. Another one for some of your utensils, hot pads, things like that. Uh, it, there's a decorative backsplash. Don't want to miss that. You know, and it. it the thing I do like about this, I know it's not like the, the fanciest looking thing ever, but it is functional because that is very easy to clean. Right up above that is your hood with a light and a fan. You have the decorative glass on here. Pretty decent storage there as well. More over to the side. You have your multimedia center. It has an HDMI port there. It's Bluetooth capable. Uh, my only hang up with this is it's in an awkward place for me. Um, I, I kind of wish they would have put this like over back by the TV, which I'll show you in a little bit. Because yes, I have an HDMI port here, but if I want any kind of auxiliary equipment like a Blu-ray player, I mean, maybe I can stuff it in here, I guess, but then I kind of have a cord hanging out. Um, I don't know. It, it just, the placement's a little off. Again, I guess, you know, let me know if you think this would be an issue or if you're just fine with it right where it is. Dropping down, coming over to the side here again, good storage space right over there. So one thing I will definitely say for this floor plan you know what, Sam, there's a light bulb. I'm going to turn it on. It's kind of dark over here. There we go. Um, one thing I will say about this floor plan, though, is that although it is a smaller layout, you actually have pretty good kitchen storage, surprisingly, right? Between all the cabinets up top, the storage down below, I think they nailed it on the storage aspect in that kitchen. Over to the side, as I mentioned, this one does have a slide-out dinette. So it drops down into a bed. This, of course, is the cushion that goes on top. You're not going to use the back cushions. You're going to use this one right here. I'll drop that over here for a second just to kind of show you the space. So as far as the dinette itself, there's plenty of room here for four people, which I love. If you have guests over, you want to entertain. I have more than enough space for my legs to the table here as well as, you know, for my torso to the table. So plenty of room to be able to, to eat a meal, converse, play games, whatever you want to do. And I like the fact that there's a light right there to help brighten up the table space. Um, I personally, I kind of almost would like two, whether it's like front and back maybe just to really help brighten up that area because I, I do like to play a lot of games at night. But, you know, again, maybe that's just me. Right here on the wall, I want to show you a couple things. So thermostat, pretty self-explanatory. This only controls the heat. Right up above is your roof-mounted AC, but the controls for that are on the AC itself. This is a Levelmate Pro. I've talked about this before in the past, but I kind of want to show you. Let me open it up here and kind of show you how it works. So uh, it basically Bluetooths to your phone. You can download an app. You, have, you do have to put in some specs. 
Um, I just kind of use the base specs here. You have to put in the width of the RV, the length of the RV, and where this is located in the RV. But the cool thing about it, as you can see, is it tells you how far off you are of level. So where this is super advantageous is you can, as you're backing up the RV, you can watch this or have your passenger watch this. You can kind of find the most level spot in that campsite rather than having to, um, you know, just kind of basically guess and then block it up. Yeah, you're probably still going to have to use some blocks, but hopefully not near as much. Then once you do block it up again, you'll be able to see that it's nice and level. So we make our way into the bathroom. Ah, you'll see that you have your toilet right here. Something I like about this, folks, this is a lightweight trailer. And look, they still put in high quality porcelain bowls. That's a huge deal for me. It's one of the things that if I'm buying a travel trailer and it has a plastic bowl, it's probably one of the first things I'm going to change out because, well, they just don't stay clean very long. And I'm a clean person. So I love the porcelain bowls in here. Uh, over to the side, you have plenty of space here for a trash can, which again, I enjoy because I like having a trash can in my bathroom. Good countertop space, electrical outlet. Your tank monitoring panel is lo located right here. You want to know where that's at. And also look at this. Your water heater runs off both propane and electric. You can turn both those on at the same time for faster recovery. Right up top is your mirrored medicine cabinets. You have a sink right down underneath that. And a little bit of storage here for maybe some extra rolls of toilet paper and some black tank chemical as well as plumbing access. Um, as far as space on the toilet, folks, I'm six foot. I, I don't really struggle here at all. I have more than enough on my shoulders. And maybe I'm touching a tiny bit on the left, but very, very, uh, very, very little. My right leg is brushed up against here a little bit, but it's not enough to be uncomfortable in my opinion. And then the shower. This is another thing that I really like. Um, in a smaller floor plan like this, a smaller travel trailer, a lot of times you have to bend down in the shower. You know, again, this thing's only 3,600 pounds. And that's not an issue. At six foot tall, I have more than enough space, especially with that skylight. I can probably be 6'3 and still shower in here without having to bend down. And in a small RV, that is huge. Making our way back out, I do want to mention on the dinette, there is storage underneath, folks. They didn't you know, waste the space. Um, because the, the dinette is raised up a little bit, it actually makes that a little bit easier to access, too. And then when we get to the front, this is another big feature for me. A lot of times in these floor plans, they'll have what they call an east to west bed where it's running you know, to the sides of the trailer. Not the case, they have a north to south. Now, it is an RV queen, so it'll be 60 wide by 74 inches long. So you know, again, if you are 6'3", your feet are probably gonna hang off the bed a little bit, uh, but I do like the fact that they gave it the north to south orientation. On both sides, you have wardrobe space to hang your clothes up top. I like this better than just having an open shelf. You know, you have a netting in there, so this stuff, you can actually put it in there while you travel and it's not uh, falling all over the place. Then something else that I like is if you noticed, these are full wardrobes and they're able to accomplish that because instead of having a nightstand right up front when you have to cut the wardrobe off, they put it in the back. And I think this is ingenious. This is something that they did uh, very, very well. So you still have a spot to put your cell phone, to put your bottle of water, and you have the electrical outlets there and it lets you keep that full wardrobe length. Last thing I want to touch on is the TV, which is located there. So if you want a TV, um, you know, that's where it's at. It'll let you watch it while you are sleeping here. Again, I kind of wish they would have put that multimedia center over in this side, but maybe that's just me. Last thing I want to touch on, open this guy up. You'll see storage there underneath, plenty of storage. Water pump, you don't have to guess where that's at. You know exactly where it's at. Um, and also, it is worth mentioning, I should probably mention that the TV is on a swivel mount, guys. So if you're in a dinette, that does swivel around so you can watch it. Don't think it is just for the bedroom. Now that we've seen the inside, let's take a look at some of the outside features on the 2020 Sonic Light 169 VRK. Right up front, I love this. That is a power tongue jack. Makes it a lot easier to hook up and disconnect to your tow vehicle rather than having to wear out your arm. You simply flip a switch and that will uh, extend and retract the tongue, raise and lower it. Then you will also see that you have a light up front for added visibility at night. You have a 20 pound propane tank behind that, rails for your battery and a battery disconnect. Another feature that I really like, so all I have to do is flip that disconnect and it will kind of kill that, uh, that creep or that phantom power from the RV. That way it's not a constant drain on the battery. You'll also see here that you have the diamond etched plating helping protect that front end from rocks and debris that get thrown up by your tow vehicle. And above that is a one piece fiberglass front, roof, and back. All that is one piece. The great thing about that is you don't have to have seams across it. The less seams and holes you have up on the roof, the less chance water is going to get in. And we all know that water uh, you know, coming in from the roof is the absolute enemy of RVs. So 
Uh, that is definitely a great feature to have. The downside of that is that it's not a walkable roof, so bear that in mind. If you need to clean anything off, you will want to make sure that you have a ladder with you. Uh, also, though, the cool thing about it is the water will naturally run to the front and back. You can see the curvature of the roof, so that way your campsite's not going to have a bunch of water dumping down on it, which is fantastic. Nice big power awning with an LED light. Touch a button to roll that guy out. Same thing to come back in. A couple outside speakers. Those are tied into that multimedia center I showed you. And again, that unit is Bluetooth capable. For the pass-through storage, you have a covered hinge, slam latch, and it is a magnetic catch. That way, you don't have to worry about anything breaking off there, you know, if you go to try to shut it and forget that it's up. And you'll see that it is a full pass-through, so plenty of room all the way across. The light inside is, uh, has a motion sensor setting, so you can turn that on. That way, you know, as soon as you open up that door, that light pops on, you can see what's in there. If you want an outside TV, this is where you'll hook it up at. Electrical outlet, cable outlet, set up a little table, boom, you are good to go. Right down underneath, gorgeous aluminum alloy wheels there. They're going to stay looking great for years to come. It is a 15-inch tire, which is wonderful. A lot of manufacturers kind of in this weight range, you know, have like a 14-inch tire. I like that they upgraded to that 15. A little bit further back, the More Ride Step Above Step System. Very solid, only has two steps. But here's the thing, again, a lot of manufacturers here when you're talking lightweight units, they'll have your standard fold-out steps, a smaller grab handle, not the case. You know this is a lightweight unit, they still went with the upgraded steps. You have the foldable grab handle here, so you have excellent control when entering that RV. Aluminum treads, which aren't going to rust, the grip tape on there for added control if it gets wet too. And right outside you have this little emblem, but much more importantly in my opinion, is the fact it's a bottle opener, which I will certainly use. Um, I have heard some people say that you know they, they can use it as like a pet tie as well. I'm not sure that I would want to. I guess it depends on the size of your dog. If you have a small dog, maybe. But for a bottle opener, 100%. Making our way around to the back. Square tubular bumper. You can pop off the end cap, slide your sewer hose in there. It gives you a convenient spot to store it. And mounted to that bumper is your spare tire with the cover. That way it stays in great shape. Right over here in the back corner. Solar prep, satellite inlet, cable inlet, all pretty self-explanatory. You also have backup camera prep. It's not a huge RV, but if you do a lot of driving by yourself or your navigator isn't great at helping you, you know, guide back, or maybe you're a first-time RVer, you're not very used to backing up a trailer, having that uh, camera can be pretty useful. Coming around to the side, 30 amp detachable power cord plugs right into there. City water inlet here, black tank flush, super handy. Rather than having to stick a hose down your toilet, you can hook it up right there to wash out your black tank. Outside shower with hot and cold water access. Terminations are right down underneath that. You can see both your black and gray tank valve. You will also see there is a second termination right up here. So you don't want to forget that. You do have two terminations. So, um, you know, if, if you're at a, a kind of more permanent site, obviously you can dump them both in the same. If you're not, you'll want to, you know, dump one, drive forward, and then dump the other. Last thing, of course, is your fresh tank fill. If you're going somewhere, you don't have city water hookup, you'll want to make sure you fill up right there. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is the 2020 Sonic Light 169 VRK. If you're interested in this lightweight travel trailer and you would like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Also in the comments section, let me know what you think they nailed, what you think they missed, or if you were designing the RV, what you would change. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.